here is our fourth axis widget. It doesn't stand for anything other than what I hope will prove to be a good example of how to do a lot of really cool fourth axis stuff in Sprout Cam. Pocketing, profiling, 2D contouring, drilling, waterline, all that stuff. The SolidWorks and I just will be available to download on the NYC CNC website. In Sprout Cam, I have already created all the machining ops for this part so I can be efficient with your time, but we are gonna go ahead and create them all from scratch because I think that's the better way to learn and to prove I know what I'm doing. Uh, the finished Sprout Cam 7 file will be available to download as well on the NYC CNC website. So here is the part in Sprout Cam. The blue is Z pointing up. It's centered on the X axis. Let's first off cut this fourth axis pocket right here. So roughing, pocketing. First thing we need to do is select one of the cylinder walls, choose base surface as a cylinder with a radius of one, it's a two inch uh, diameter piece of aluminum we're working with here, and then change the axis to the X axis. It's because it's running along the X here. Well, we shouldn't have to do all that stuff, but the reality is once you do it in Sprout Cam, it actually is pretty easy, I found, to get fourth, fourth axis stuff working. I'm not going to focus on feeds and speeds, except to the extent we need to talk about stuff like bottom level. Sprout Cam, Sprout Cam treats Z0 differently in different fourth axis stuff. Again, a little bit frustrating, but as long as you pay attention, uh, it does what we need it to do. So because we selected the base surface with a one inch radius, it treats the OD of the workpiece as Z0. It's a quarter inch deep pocket, so we'll come down 0.25 come down in 50 thou steps, no relief angle, one thou deviation, and I think, knock on wood, that's all we need. Now, to choose the actual pocket, just select the edges around it, click add pocket, run, boom, just like that. We'll do a quick simulation, which by the way, because I have the machine on, it will actually make sense. Oh, and that reminds me, we need to change our workpiece. Cylinder axis close. Let's see if this looks right now. There we go. So, well, here I'll show you with the machine on now, and then we'll look at it with the machine off. So, this makes sense. That's exactly what it's going to look like. Boom, 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 boom. So, if you don't have the machine on, for reasons I don't really understand, it looks quite strange when you simulate. It looks like the machine is moving and the part is static, which is really no, no good. You wanna see if it's doing it right. Now is a great time to mention as well, if you're doing any of this stuff, make sure you have Tormach selected. And you do that by double clicking going to machines and Tormach will be listed here. That does a couple things. It includes the machine render and it makes sure you've got certain fourth axis stuff enabled. Okay, we've got that done. Let's do this spiral flute right here. That'll be a finishing 2D contouring. It's going to be a ball end mill. So spherical 35.25. And let's see here. I forget what the dimensions were, but actually not really that important. Let's select, oops, if we double click, and then we can deselect enough of it like so. We only want one edge. Okay, curve. Okay, now that doesn't look right either because again, it doesn't know what the orientation is. So we've got to do that base surface thing again. So select the cylinder, base surface, radius of one. Now I think this is strange because now it creates this big loop around it which doesn't look right. And if we click okay though, and we go back in and you just change the top level to zero because remember, I just said when we do base surface, that sets that at Z0. So the top level is zero. The safe plane will say is a quarter inch. Bottom level is 25. Now let's take a look. 
looks good. I just I want to offset it the other way. Oops. And boom, boom, boom. Let's take a look. Turn the machine back on. Hit play. Boom. And that was a little bit quick, but you see it did what we wanted it to do. Next up, let's machine this flat on the side. Now this is a little different. We're going to do finishing 2D contouring. Same thing we just did for this flute, but this isn't like a simultaneous uh, operation, if you will. So it's actually a little bit different. We're going to choose those curves, but you need to know what the angle of that face is. I built the part. I happen to know it's at a 90 degree angle. So over here, in whatever they call it, setup, you need to manually set this to 90. And then we'll go back, and what we'll do is say that's our bottom level, and we'll just quickly plug in, same thing, 25, and we'll even do some tangent leads in, lead ins, and we will obviously have to rough this to make it all work. Let's say 0.4, and let's see what we get. Perfect. Real quick simulation there. Rotates the part around as one needs to, and cuts it out. So I don't know. Hold on. Let's. Try that again. There we go. I accidentally turned off one of the visibility. So there you can see it's machining it. So it rotates around and machines it. I didn't quite uh, rough it enough. So we'll change that over. Okay. Oops, where's our, there we go. Okay, next we're going to interpolate this hole, which we can reuse by just copy, paste, and choose the hole as the curve. We can choose that as top level, and that as bottom level, and we'll choose a smaller tool. And we'll do it, you know, rough it in point two, and we'll go in steps of point oh five, just to be conservative. And let's change that lead in to an arc, just a short arc. Boom. Okay, that works. And effectively the same thing again to chamfer it. In fact, we can just remove the offset and choose this edge as bottom level and top level. And then we'll pick our tool, go to engraver and quarter inch, 0, 45. Okay, let's see what that does for us. Perfect. I didn't pick the right uh, officer for that hole, but you get the idea. Perfect. So actually we'll fix that real quick. Right, there we go. Perfect. Okay, next up, holes. Now these were tricky for me because I what was happening was I would go to tool uh, roughing hole machining, drag it to the bottom here. And I couldn't figure out how to select the darn hole. 
it would always do that to me. And what I realized is it's similar to what we just discussed about, which is that you have to set the angle. So I happen to know that this is 45 degrees. Now, what threw me at first again, though, is 45 didn't work. But the reason is that you remember this was 90. So this is on the other side of the part. So it'll be 360 minus 45, which is 315. So as soon as we type in 315, hit enter, it knows that that's the orientation of the hole and choose that and click center. But again, next one still wouldn't work, a different angle. So we can say spot, choose that as our spot and set up our spot. You can click copy paste and then go back here. This next hole is uh, another 30 degrees. So that would be uh, more, so reduce it another bit. So 315 minus 30 is 285. Hit enter, choose that, center, delete the first one. And the last one, yet again, to the 85 minus 30 is 255. It's so another 30 degrees off. And choose center. I'm, I'm gonna I'm not gonna go through the brain damage of setting up the drills and the spots for those. We'll hop over to my finished model for that. I'll also show you a little trick on this part. And then the final thing I wanted to show was we will machine a ball on the end of this part. So to do that, we'll go to finishing, rotary machining, and all we gotta do is select all these faces. Oop. Faces, and then we'll go in here. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna go look at the settings um, in the finished file. There's no trick there in terms of surfaces or complications on that one though. So go back to my finished file here. How did I have this set up? Um, on the file that this would be the one to download, what I tried to do was say R for roughing or F for finishing, and then so R pocketing is roughing, pocketing, F2D is finishing, 2D contouring, BL would be bottom level, BL and TL is bottom level, top level, and I think that was all the lingo there. So this was the end sphere, finish rotary, select the faces to get the part to work. So what did I do? A ball end mill with nothing here. And then um, spiral roughing passes, because you, have, you can't machine this all one pass with the finished pass. And I think that was it. I didn't do anything else over here. Click run. And let's render that and see what it looks like. So wasting some time there. I'll see if I can figure out how to do this a little bit better. I'm actually really excited to see how this machines. I have not machined it yet. And so forth. You get the idea to do a finished pass. So on my finished file where I've got everything done, I thought what I'd show you is you can't spot even something like this because it's round and the spot itself would look oblong. So if we add that to the render, to the simulation, we go ahead and try that, you will see, using like a big old half inch spot here, it'll look funny, it'll look oblong. So no real trick to it. It's just a um, 2D contour uh, like before, but it's, but you still, even though this is a 2D contour that has um, 3D motion to it, um, so in other words, this flute was obviously a, a fourth axis type part. Um, this face was not because it just had to index it to that position. This is something in between, but I would think it errs more on the side of being similar to the flute because it does have fourth axis rotation to it. However, um, for reasons I don't totally understand, you do have to enter the A-axis center line of this op for 2D contouring. I then chose the um, the, the curve here to, to with the chamfer settings. And then if you look though, it to me, it still looks oblong, still looks kind of funny. And I think that's because it's trying to simulate the fourth axis curve in the, in the tool path. Um, I haven't machined it yet. We're going to machine it together here with that video coming out tomorrow. But if we run it and simulate it, 
it does look correct. Two passes. In fact, I'm pretty darn certain that that's going to be correct. So that is a wrap. There is more you can do to fourth axis machining. There's some features I didn't even talk about, like multiplying across the A-axis, um, more stuff I don't even know about. So but my point was I'm hoping, if you're out there and you're trying to do really cool stuff with your fourth axis, that this video will be a good framework. Uh, special to shout out to Eric and uh, Jacob over at Tormach. I could not have done all this without some of their help. And I'm always happy to answer questions. Uh, just put them in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this, I would greatly appreciate if you would either share it with your friends or like it or comment or thumbs up, uh, all that good stuff. Um, but again, stay tuned for tomorrow, folks, and we'll be uh, machining this part on the Tormach. Take care.